time is money. And that's why Catscale built the Way My Truck app. Your drivers can complete their entire way without ever leaving the cab. They'll see their weights on their mobile device or tablet, and scale tickets can be automatically emailed to you. With a fleet profile, you can save back office time as well. No driver reimbursements. And you'll have access to report data. Find out more at WayMyTruck.com. Hey, Jack, it's been a couple of weeks since we were down at Cummins, but uh, let's do a little bit of a recap on uh, on that visit to Columbus, Indiana. What did you think was going on down there? I guess the big takeaway for both of us, and we were both at ACT Expo together, and so we had a hint that this new wave was building. But, you know, I think I think the takeaway um, from Cummins mainly is that the internal combustion engine is not dead. Um, it... Um, it's going to go through a metamorphosis. It's going to change. But, you know, I think that's good news for fleets out there. We, you know, I think we were told in the briefing, one of the briefings we were in that, you know, really doesn't matter what the fuel is. If you're running, you know, the bottom part of the engine is the basic Cummins block with the pistons and all the familiar systems. And then obviously, if you're going to change the fuel out, they have specialized heads that mount atop the engine now. So from a maintenance perspective, this is going to be a lot easier on a lot of fleets. Um, it's a familiar, it's a familiar item. They understand ba inherently how it works. So um, I think um, I think the uh, the the demise of the internal combustion engine has been a bit prematurely predicted. I would think so. Yeah. Well, let's get into some of the trucks we did drive. Uh, new stuff, anyway. We had a go at the, uh, or there were two trucks, I guess, with the new 6.7 octane engine, the B6.7 octane, which uh, the way it was explained to me is going to replace the diesel 6.7 in a lot of applications like school buses, medium duty trucks. But it's an 87 octane gasoline engine, which Cummins and gasoline engines don't necessarily, or haven't certainly up to now gone hand in hand. Uh, you had to kick that one. I had to try at it. Uh, we got a bit of footage here uh, from our drives, but just off the top of your head, what did you think of that thing? I was impressed. That was the first vehicle I drove. It was in a relatively new um, luxury edition Dodge Ram. Um, and I was like, I was like, oh, I can't believe I'm driving a Cummins gasoline engine. How's this going to go? And it, it really, I thought it was super peppy. Um, very fast response, both off the line and, uh, you remember, I, I the, the guy told me to pass everybody on the first lap, and I kind of threw the uh, the driving sequence out of order because I lapped everybody in the thing. It was quick. I, I was I was impressed with it. Um, they're being mum about where it's going to go and you know who they're building it for, but they seem to sort of indicate they've got some people on the line. I'll be curious to see where that engine winds up because it was I was pretty impressed with it. What about you? Yeah, I was too. Uh especially the ram they had they had another engine in a in a, an m2 freightliner yeah now both of those engines we should say off the bat were engineering test platforms yeah. uh, one of them the one in the m2 was used for validation and testing uh the number of engines they have out there right now on the street in testing uh dave king i think told me there was about two million miles so far on the on the test fleet which is pretty reasonable uh but i thought the uh Oh, it was also mated to an Allison six-speed transmission, which we should say is not available uh, on that Dodge Ram 2500, nor would they say whether or not that engine was ever going to show up under a Dodge Ram hood, uh, but that's just the marketing. You know, they're not going to let all the cats out of the bag at once. Uh, but it, it's, I was really impressed, and he said, they told me that the big appeal to it for the customer will be the simplicity, you know, no, no def, no after treatment, none of the usual grief and you know, headaches associated with a diesel. And when you're a non truck trucking fleet, you know, like a baker or a gardener or, you know, whatever you do with trucks, you don't know all about that stuff and it just causes headaches. Right. So, you know, the move to gasoline is, is pretty understandable as, as diesel becomes more complex, more expensive and the emissions get tighter and tighter. People just don't want any part of it anymore. They'll give up fuel economy for simplicity, I think. All right, then let's take a little look at the footage here that we bought from those drives. That This is a very nice Dodge Ram. It's a test truck, and it is fitted with a new gasoline medium-duty engine. This is a 6-liter. It puts out about 300 horsepower, 
and I've been driving it around this test track here just outside of Columbus, Indiana, and it is an impressive engine. It's quick, it's quiet, um, the acceleration is, is just really impressive, and this is a pretty heavy truck. And they've got another truck here, they've got an M2 Freightliner equipped with it, which is a much heavier platform, and still the engine performs just as well with that. And uh, this engine will be ready for production in about 2024. They're in talks with various OEMs and other, other companies right now, seeing gauging interest in the product. And I have to believe there are going to be some OEMs that are going to be very interested in this engine. I mean, it is, it's, it's you can hear, it's solid, it's quiet, um, smooth, power comes on smoothly, like I'm, I'm punching it right now. And we're at 60 right there, so. And now we're at 70. Out of track, there's 80. So as you can see, I mean this is a this is this is an engine that's got some serious uh, power behind it. So I think one of the more interesting things also about Cummins is when they're when we're looking at all these alternative fuel solutions, they understand that there's a long way to go and there's going to be a pretty pretty big sea change going towards 2050. But what they emphasize to us repeatedly is. They understand that their customers have to make money with these products here and now in the midst of that transition. They just can't throw a hydrogen engine out at fleets and say, hey, here you go, here's a hydrogen engine, have fun with it. Um, they understand there's gonna be a transition process. Uh, they understand what Mike wrote at the North American Council for Freight Efficiency calls a messy middle, where there's gonna be a lot of technologies, a lot of sort of stepping stone technologies that aren't gonna necessarily find their way to the end result when we get to 2050. Um, so there's going to be a lot of options out there, powertrains, there's going to be something for everyone, but Cum Cummins is adamant that no matter what they put out there, the customer's going to have to be able to make money with it, move freight with it, and uh, you know keep the vehicles maintained, keep them on the road. So it's a tall order, but they're, they're actively seeking to do exactly that. Yeah, so your impressions and mine there, I guess, were kind of along the same lines. We're both, uh, both pretty happy with that one. I can't wait to see one in real life. Yeah, like I said, if you, hey, gasoline, gasoline power, 300 plus horsepower, you know, it's as, it, it performed as well as any engine I've driven in that class truck in recent years, no question. Didn't sound too bad either. I kind of like it. No, it sounded right good. There. Yeah. All right, what about the Isuzu then, the F Series? It was a class six, uh, all electric, battery electric from one end to the other. Um, not sure on the pedigree of that powertrain. Yeah. Uh, whether it was a Cummins design, I, I'm pretty sure Cummins was using the F series as a test bed, so it yes. wasn't going to be, you know, necessarily uh, the electric powertrain you'd see in an F series Isuzu. It was mostly yeah. a Cummins project. So let's not try and link those two, so people no, have any no, expectations. No, they're, they're just that's just a mule test yep. bed. So that's yeah. a good way of putting it. I don't know if Isuzu would feel very good about that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> You made some of the same observations I did when we were driving that, um, you know, quiet, powerful, all that kind of stuff we normally associate with electric trucks. But one thing that caught me off guard was how aggressive the regenerative braking was. Yeah, yeah. They told me they had that really dialed dialed in, and I was um, I was a little taken aback by it. I mean, it, I mean, it would like lunge you forward when you took your foot off the off the throttle. And, um, but I, you know, I was watching kind of the charge and, um, when I was going around the track hitting on it and I played with it some, and I actually tried to, um, sort of mediate coming off the accelerator to see, you know, if I could sort of keep it from being as aggressive, but it, it was dialed up pretty high. Um, I don't know though, I, you know, I took several laps in that one and after a few laps, I kind of got used to it though. It was you know, it wasn't, it wasn't um, overwhelming or unsafe. It just was different, you know. And I guess that's an, a metaphor for a lot of these trucks. They're just different, but it's nothing crazy different. You get used to them pretty quick, but it's it's just not, you know, your daddy's Isuzu, you know, truck. <laughs> they explained to me that it, it could be dialed in uh, or out but there wasn't any driver controls on the truck that would allow the driver to do that. So let's cut to a bit of video here, Jack, and have a look at uh, your test drive in mine and get some observations from that, uh, Isuzu. 
All right, so I'm in a Isuzu FTR. This is a class six, it's got air brakes, and it's a truck, it's a test bed. It's fitted with Cummins uh, electric powertrain, battery electric powertrain. I've got the, uh, the ignition turned on, the truck is in high voltage mode, and so starting it is just as simple as snapping the uh, part brake off, putting the transmission in D, and away we go. And there's a real handy little uh, screen up here. It gives me the state of charge, range. Um, one thing about this truck is kind of weird is the, uh, the regen braking system on it is very aggressive, almost too aggressive. But um, I guess they're primarily just testing it out, trying to you know determine what the right settings are. But I did this, I took this truck for about four laps on the track outside of Columbus, Indiana here and never once got on the brake until I was ready to, to stop. The uh, regen braking is amazing and this will demonstrate it in just a second. <clears throat> but we're gonna come out of this turn onto the straightaway and uh, basically I'm just gonna put my foot into it and we'll see how much it, this accelerates and it's really remarkable. So 20 miles an hour, foot's down and you can feel the acceleration. Not too different from an airplane and uh, we're up to 50 now in that relatively short period of time now that only took two percent out of my actually one percent out of my state of charge which isn't that bad uh, but obviously range and efficiency are key here so I'm gonna take my foot off the accelerator pedal and we'll see how fast this decelerates so 50 miles an hour foot off the pedal 40 miles an hour 30 miles an hour and we're down to 20 and I never touched the brake pedal and I put looks like about a percent back into my state of charge so <laughs> kind of cool it's I you know after seeing that footage I was reminded uh, the young woman who was in the truck beside me the uh, the tour guide the engineer who uh, worked on the control systems for that truck was telling me she'd never worked on an internal combustion engine, which I thought was kind of neat. You know, an engineer working for Cummins who's uh, got no ICE grease under her fingernails. That's pretty yeah. neat. Kind of, kind of tells you just good way of noting how deep this sort of uh, cultural shift is going over there. Indeed, and you know, let's take a little, you know, speculative look at the uh, at the road ahead for Cummins. Uh, I think there's a ton of opportunity there, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty interesting time to be Cummins engine. You know, I, I've said many times, I remember back in the vertical integration days, back when Freightliner and Volvo suddenly announced, they were really interested in putting their own engines, transmissions, axles, those sorts of things into their vehicles. And everybody sort of wandered around going, oh, you know, poor Cummins, whatever's going to become of them. And then, of course, Navistar went with the Max Force and, um, you know, they were losing share and everybody thought, well, what's going to happen to Cummins? And basically, I think this is a company that has essentially reinvented itself. It was a company founded on diesel engines. And now suddenly we're sitting there and we're talking with them about uh, fuel cells, hydrogen fuel cells, high, liquid hydrogen, internal combustion engines. Um, they're breaking through, they're breaking new ground on how they design their diesel engines. There's some hints that we might see some smaller displacement diesels. And they were a little coy, but these may be smaller displacement, lighter engines that put out comparable horsepower numbers to you, you get right now from say a 13 liter, 15, I don't know about 15, but certainly mm -hmm. a 13. Yep. And uh, a gasoline engine out of nowhere, you know, hey, suddenly here's a medium duty, peppy little gasoline engine. So um, every solution that's on the table right now they've got a product, you know, whether it's fuel cell, whether it w will be hydrogen, whether it's gasoline, whether it's diesel, whether it's battery electric. Um, they're sort of lining up and saying, all right, what do you think your solution is? Okay, you're interested in that? We've got it. Um, and again, you know, um, I, this is not to suggest that the other OEMs aren't going to have a smorgasbord of technologies as well, but you have to assume that, you know, they're going to focus on one or two that seem best suited to their core audience buyers. 
and they'll go somewhere else for the optional or the less critical powertrain systems. And you got to wonder who they'll buy those from. And I think I know who that will end up being, be my guess. <laughs> yeah, I think your guess and mine are probably along the same lines, too. All right, Jack, I think we better wrap it up there. We've been gassing on here for far too long. Uh, I've been talking with Jack Roberts. He's a senior editor of Heavy Duty Trucking. And he's been talking to me, Jim Park, the equipment editor at Heavy Duty Trucking. Jack, we'll catch you out here again next time. Cheers. Everybody be safe. Thank you.